In the olden times, technology constantly blew people's mind. Like, fire make warm and cook meat? <gasps> now, computer pretty much alive and soon cook me. But not this me. Microsoft continues to herald its AI future by secretly putting an AI assisted super resolution feature in Windows 11. The tool was first discovered on Twitter by user at Phantom of Earth, who posted screenshots from the 26052 preview build of Windows. Of course, since this was a hidden feature added by Microsoft, not just anyone could find it. You need to use an external tool to enable it. ChatGPT. <laughs> the feature can be used to make supported games play more smoothly with enhanced details, but seems to also work with native Windows apps and even windowed games, meaning it could potentially support older titles. According to Tom's hardware, your system needs a GPU with tensor cores or a processor with an NPU, but that's all part of Microsoft's AI future. Starting this summer, AI processors will become standard for Windows PCs as part of the major OS overhaul everyone thought would be Windows 12, but is allegedly just an update to Windows 11 called 24H2, starring Kiefer Sutherland. The International Data Corporation forecasts 60% of PC shipments will be AI PCs within the next three years. The hell is that? So it sounds like Microsoft will get their dream of a future full of hundreds of AI products, all named Copilot. We are all Copilot. There's only one pilot. Yeah. There are many cobots. Mm. AMD was secretly funding a project to make CUDA compatible with Radeon cards for two years. Now that project is open source. Developer Andre Yannick originally created Zluda to enable CUDA support on Intel hardware, but Team Red reached out to him after he abandoned it to see if he could adapt it to work on their graphics software stack. Now, apparently Radeon cards can run on modified CUDA code, i.e. CUDA enabled software can run on AMD GPUs without any input from the software's developers. Not only does Zluda, <laughs> I love it, work on both Windows and GNU slash Linux, but as mentioned up top, it's now fully open source. AMD decided to stop funding Yannick's development and due to a clause in his contract, that meant he could FOSS the hell out of it. While the software shows promise, there are some caveats. We can't have anything nice. For example, code for NVIDIA Optics, also known as Team Green's ray tracing API, does not work. But it does allow Radeon GPUs to run native CUDA code in Blender 4.0 faster than AMD's own Radeon HIP code. Some people say AHIP, I say HIP. Leading to quicker rendering. Yannick hasn't necessarily re-abandoned the project, but says without financial backing, he will only work on improvements he is personally invested in. He's fully self-actualized. Fortunately, that includes getting DLSS working on Radeon GPUs. Zluda's code is all on GitHub, so if you want to contribute, get forking started. <laughs> if you get that joke, I'm so proud of you. Young Zluda is my rap name. Zluda! <laughs> yeah! Apple has apparently decided to settle the lawsuit it brought against chip startup Revos two years ago. The Cupertino crew <laughs> wrote this. Initially alleged that Revos led a coordinated campaign to recruit Apple's chip designers and instructed the poached employees to steal trade secrets on their way out the door, though the trade secrets claim was actually dismissed a year later. According to filings, the settlement will allow Apple to conduct a forensic examination of Revos systems to recover any confidential information. Speaking of in-depth analysis, iFixit has published part two of their Vision Pro teardown, where they discuss the actual display resolution of the device. Turns out the horizontal resolution falls a bit short of the 4K standard, explaining why Apple didn't refer to their panels as 4K. Plus the average pixels per degree is 34, like me. While that's great in terms of modern headsets, it's almost one third the PPD of an iPhone 15 Pro Max held one foot away from your face. Which is superior. Like me. This may help explain why Mark Gurman thinks it could kill the iPad as Apple's Mac replacement in several years. According to some of the device's designers, it'll take four generations for the device to reach its ideal form. I'm guessing that's the one where it's actually worth what they're charging for it. It actually evolves into a giant space baby. It's full of stars. <laughs> now it's time for the quick bits brought to you by Delete Me. The pros at keeping your personal stuff, well, Personal? Ever Googled yourself and found tons of your info floating around? Not cool, very creepy, right? It can lead to annoying calls, dodgy emails, and even identity theft. But fear not, Delete Me's got your back. Their tech whizzes and expert team will boot your info off those sketchy people's search sites. 
No need for you to waste hours sorting it out. Delete Me's got it covered. And the best part, they send you personalized privacy reports showing what they found, where they found it, and what they nixed. Ready to kick your personal info out of the web spotlight? Head to joindeleteme.com slash techlinked and use code techlinked for a sweet 20% off. It's a sweet 20%. No, is... You know, there's a cool million and a sweet 20. Absolutely. You know that. When it comes to brightening my day, I always think of one thing. The sun. <laughs> if I were to think of two things, the second thing would be quick bits. According to reports, Xbox head Phil Spencer, it's the whole head, had an internal town hall last week where he told employees they would keep making consoles. And that's great news because it means the new reports that Microsoft Surface team is going to be developing the next Xbox devices could be legitimate. Specifically, Xbox Insider Mag claims there will be two next-gen Xbox devices, but only one will be a traditional console. The other will be a dockable handheld that can both stream games from the cloud and run games locally. Pretty soon, you'll be able to verbally berate eight-year-olds from the comfort of a coffee shop, where they're not allowed. Nvidia has launched a new workstation GPU with the unusual name RTX 2000 Ada generation. Not to be confused with the RTX 20 series of gaming GPUs, nor the RTX A2000, which this card is replacing. Is that clear? Nvidia's confusing decisions continue in the specs. The new card's interface is limited to PCIe 4.0 X8 instead of X16. And while memory has been bumped to 16 gigabytes, its interface was downgraded from 192 to just 128 bit bus for a 22% lower memory bandwidth overall. But at $625, the RTX 2000 ADA generation is also 22% more expensive than the RTX A2000 when it was launched. So the math is perfectly in line with yeah, what makes, we've come to expect here. Makes sense. 10 days ago, Google announced that YouTube had hit over 100 million premium subscribers, and now Google One has reached the same milestone, possibly indicating that the Venn diagram of Google users willing to pay for an additional cloud storage and to get rid of ads is a, it's just a circle. 100 million might sound like a lot, but it's nothing compared to Apple's billion plus paid subscribers for Apple Music, Apple One, and iCloud Plus. Honestly, it's kind of weird knowing that YouTube Premium has fewer subscribers than Mr. Beast. Engineers at MIT have created a stamp size sticker that monitors the health of a patient's internal organs using ultrasound, or at least it does in rats. Ultra rats, just joking. But humans, much like ultra rats, have organs inside their bodies, so it's still pretty exciting. The small wearable ultrasound would allow continuous monitoring, meaning it could catch sudden changes in a transplant patient's condition before it's too late, especially if they are a rodent of some kind. They are so smart. Humans? No, the rats. Mm. They'd figure this out. And this year's Super Bowl ads were full of AI, yeah. So several companies decided to shell out for NFL spots to show off their new fancy software. Microsoft talked about Copilot for the 17,000th time. Google showed off an accessibility feature to help the visually impaired take selfies. And Etsy demonstrated how you can buy cheese for the French. They don't need our cheese. Coca-Cola took a slightly different tactic by parodying the infamous AI-generated beer commercial to advertise their new sports drink has no artificial sweeteners because nothing in sports should be artificial. Everything should be natural, except the amount of head trauma. Actually, it's probably natural. It's paranormal, actually. The ghost in the helmet. And it's only paranatural for you to come back on Wednesday for more tech news. It comes in multiple flavors. Just lick your screen and find them all. No, don't. What? Do it.